The boys are back in town. This is my horny friend, Greg. He's cool. He's been here all morning. We are in Damascus, Virginia. We're starting the Transamerica Trail, something we've wanted to do for a very long time and something that I think we're gonna try to tackle over the next three to five years. We're gonna try to continue just going along the Transamerica Trail and discover, you know, the entire trail and see what it has to offer. And it's something that's been on my bucket list and it's something that I've wanted to do. So here we are, we're doing it. This is kind of the, the first big trip we've uh, done, you know, since uh, New Brunswick. But for now, we're enjoying the morning. Uh, Drinking liquid um, gasoline out of a can, and we're gonna pack up and start moving on and say bye to our friend Fred, horny Fred. <laughs> All right, you good? Thanks, bud. So we're at camp. This is day one of uh, Transamerica Trail, and uh, I'm excited to get back into it. And You're very soft-spoken this morning. Yeah, I'm still waking up. I'm still, still waking up. I still haven't finished my coffee yet, but it's um, it's starting to work. So I'm not sure how <laughs> how curious they are or how angry they are. Oh, they're curious. They're good. There's tons of people but, walking uh, through here. Oh, dude, there's a baby cow. Yeah. There's a baby cow over there. And yeah, let's hit the road. Let's do it. No, as much as I hate to say it, I kind of miss the point of the sun they took. Sorry, I stepped on you, what'd you say? I'm a fan of truck without squeaking. You want, I can just make squeaking noises for you. I'm doing that on my own, but I appreciate it. I'm just doing it in the truck, as the truck goes. It's just to so kind of relive my past, that's all. on the Transamerica Trail here this morning. Um, we've had to do some technical things to set the cameras up in the trucks, but we are ready to go and we've just crossed the state line. I have no idea what to expect from the Transamerican Trail. Uh, there are some areas that I've been on before, but beyond that, it is unknown. Our goal is Arkansas in seven days. I don't think we're gonna make it, but we're gonna try. So bear with us and thanks for joining this adventure. Wanna feel the fire running off your kiss Ooh, honey, you move like water Ooh, honey, you're a certified dime Ooh, honey, you're turning me on Never miss a beat, you're right on time Let's drink and jive Ooh, man, holler, cut up the road This is your song, pass me the jug Pour me another, we're gonna shake till the morning comes so not so exciting part of um, overlanding or backcountry adventuring I'd like to actually see it referred to as that but um, yeah we're taking air I retires because we're finally 
on sustaining gravel. We're around Linville Gorge. And I believe this area was used for the filming of Last of the Mohicans. We've been here before. We're finally in some very familiar territory. Um, and this series of forest roads around Linville Gorge area is, is pretty bumpy, pretty rough, and pretty hard on tires. And uh, somebody's coming, so we need to get Gabby out of the way. I'm stoked. This is great. We're driving along this awesome forest road, but we're like going up over this mountain. It's just absolutely insane. There's a few pockets where we kind of come up over a crest and you'll be, you'll see between some trees, there'll be a little clearing and there's like just this vast landscape of mountains. It's awesome. So it feels good to get out here and be on top of a mountain in a truck. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't be happier right now. This is exactly where I want to be. I had watched season three, which was like New Hampshire, Maine. I just said, oh, this looks like something I'd like to be a part of. And I feel like I can bring something to the table with camera work and whatnot. So I emailed and didn't hear anything back for like probably two months. And then Jason emailed me one day and was like, do you want to talk? Because uh, we have an open space on uh, Adventure Vermont. And um, I'd love to talk about you doing video stuff. And I was like, absolutely. I absolutely want to be involved. I interviewed with every member of the team. I had an interview with Jason and Gabby over the phone, and that was fine. And then I had an in-person interview with John Rutherford, who's not here on this trip. He bought me chicken and I couldn't eat it because I was too hungover. And I regret that to this day because it was really, really good chicken. <laughs> Ingalls Market. Is it on the way? Yeah, yeah, it's seven miles that way. Our route's that way. We're turning left right here. Well, okay, so it's not on the way. <laughs> um, I mean, I say the worst thing that happened tonight is I've got four hamburgers and I make hamburgers and then we just. Non house. That's what. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I mean, I'll make some nice hamburgers. Yeah. Or we can have tacos. And I've got a whole drawer full of snacks. Like, oh, we saw that. But yeah, food <laughs> is not an issue here. I think we just we got plenty speak of for yourself. Yeah, food is not an issue. We're, gonna make for we're just gonna hit the road and try to find another campground because I don't want to stay in an RV park. No, that's too, yeah. too yeah. glamping. Yeah, that's too glamping. Yeah, too glamping as we're driving these around. <laughs> and I, I knew exactly what it was when it happened and, and I heard a snap and it was the trash can or trash bag off the back of the truck. People joke all the time about sleeping in rooftop tents because there's animals that'll, that'll come and get in your tent or something and and I put everything away last night, except for the trash bag. I woke up right away, the truck rocked. 
I should have just put it in the trash can here at the campsite. And so I just kind of listened outside and it's a pretty bright boon tonight. And I heard crunching because there's cans in there. Um, I mean, there really wasn't any food at all. He's obviously very desperate. And I knew exactly it was a bear. And then I heard him come back in the woods and I could see with the moonlight out of my tent windows up here. He's a big, big black bear. And we see black bears all the time in West Virginia. And I came right back upside the truck again and I was like, boom, woof, get out of here. And he kind of got startled and ran off, but we've got Walter and Angela in a tent out there and he's over there. <laughs> I got you, babe! <laughs> First camping trip ever. I brought the kids um, probably to the Delaware Water Gap. And we camped there a long time ago when the kids were really young. I like the outdoors. I love nature and um, it, it brings me peace. Uh, I had a buddy of mine that my father would drop us off Friday night afternoon at a state forest that was wasn't huge maybe three four thousand acres and he would pick us up Sunday afternoon and we would just backpack and wander and hang out and just you know we weren't doing anything stupid we were just hiking and camping and uh, we loved it I mean it was just being outside and bottom line you know it was, it was clean fun the kids are older they're on their own and now we have time to figure out what we want to do and we both love the na nature and outdoors right. and we can do this together right and yeah, exactly. uh, we're Forward. trying to figure it out um, dogs are always a good idea because dogs can smell bears miles away and they'll start barking and they'll move I mean black bears are not a vicious animal um, but if they're hungry they're gonna go for something, so make sure you put all your shit away. Uh, wow. Okay, I don't, I think it's like two o'clock. Oh, he's after something else. He's in something. I'll check it with you in the morning. Passed out like, uh, fried food some. It was awesome. Nicole. Yeah, last night Gabby was done ski. <laughs> <laughs> that happened last night. Put everything away, <laughs> and I left my fancy homemade trasheroo um, up here on the water, our jerry can. And now I've found the bag. Fortunately, there's not a bunch of just trash in the woods, so picked everything up. Uh, but good day ahead. Just gotta wake Gabby up like we do every morning. Gotta wake him up and get him rolling. Um, Gonna have a quick cup of coffee and we're heading for the North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, Georgia border. I think we're gonna make it there today. I think we've got some four wheel drive action too. Um, but yeah, it should be a little more gravel today than yesterday. You know, I got a little bummed out. I felt like we spent a lot of time on pavement, but I mean, it is the US and it's hard to interconnect everything together and in certain states. I mean, um, West Virginia is pretty good about it you know, a contiguous gravel route or dirt route four wheel drive, but uh, the further south and the further um, towards the central U.S. we get, I think it's going to be tougher. Day one of Trans-American Trail is down. Now we start day two. Gabby! What? I was waiting until 8 o'clock to get up. I was, I was supposed to be like a 10 minute cat nap. To turn into a 14 hour coma. Rapid fire. What are you excited for today? Your what, mother. What did we do yesterday? Your mother. And what do you want to do tomorrow? Your mother. Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, yesterday was, yesterday was a good day. It was, uh, we put down a bunch of miles. We got into North Carolina. You know, we weren't really, didn't really have an expectation for the day. But that's one thing that's different about this trip is there's not really an expectation or a somewhere that we have to get to. So we're just kind of moving at a steady pace and hammering down. Is this a school for ants? 
I have crab crab gloves. Yeah, we got these from Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how the Apparently, that's how Canadians' fingers look. They have just <laughs> one huge finger, one small finger, and a thumb. Uh -huh. That's all they need. That's what they eat poutine with. That's all they need. See. secondary roads for a long time. It'd be great on a motorcycle, absolutely amazing on a motorcycle, but we're still at 25 PSI hunting for Hurricane Creek and a lot of the fun stuff that's in the Cherokee National Forest, Teleco Plains, all that fun stuff is, is ahead of us. But this section of the Trans-American Trail has tested our gut and our nerves at about 25 miles an hour, maybe 30 tops on some of the straight stretches for about 30 miles. So brace yourself for this section. Back on gravel, happy about it, going up a mountain. I ate zebra cakes today, it was magical. I had a meat stick today, that was also magical. I also fired rocks at Gabby's windshield going around a corner, uh, that was not so magical. Now we are on the Hurricane Creek Trail. So I think we've picked the right time of the week to come. It's a Monday. And we've got the team kind of set up through here so we can kind of show you what it looks like. A lot of people have driven on the Hurricane Creek Trail. It's obvious it gets a lot of traffic. So we'll check in with you later. I, I love driving, so for me, I have no problem with it. I drive for a living most of the time anyway, so to me this is, you know, second nature. It's all about like the company, the vehicle, and the snacks. Snacks are important. So a favorite day would definitely be um, off-roading on um, Hurricane Creek. Being able to see more of uh, the backwoods and back of the United States that you don't experience normally. So it's kind of nice to see like, you know, what America has to offer. And hospitality has been amazing so far. about time, huh? Yeah, it's about time. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Hurricane Creek's been a lot of fun and uh, very few places to pull over, but we've got a pretty good system worked out to actually film a good portion of it and keep momentum on this track in case anybody got behind us but like i said it's monday no traffic out here knock on wood it's been fantastic um everybody's having a good time they've earned us over the last day and a half of travel and we just got a bunch more gravel left to go having fun yeah, yeah. What do you think about this so far? This is pretty awesome. This is exactly what I was expecting for today. Didn't no. we do this? Didn't Jamie and Jeremy and I and you do this? We did do this. 
I think we did, and yeah. we just did it in the Forerunner and the Tacoma. Yeah, right? we yeah we did it. I think it was like season end of season two, beginning of season three. Because you wrecked your drone like three times. Yes, yes, I did. That was it. Yes, and it it, it was toast. Thanks for bringing that back up. <laughs> Appreciate it. That was really nice of you. All right, how far, how much farther do we have? Uh, a couple miles. A couple miles. A couple okay. miles, and then we get out on hardtop. Yeah. Good. Right. We've been waiting for this, huh? Uh, hell yeah. Yeah. I'm done with those. Windy roads. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to do some four wheel action. Finally got my truck in four wheel drive, and it started squeaking again. Angela's favorite saying is, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, we're, are you f***ing kidding me? Well, that's, that's, I was trying to keep it yeah, nice for there the camera. You go. You know? Huh? Huh? No, just come right through. Just have a little momentum. Come on. <laughs> and that's when I called out. I said, I need a consult here. <laughs> and hell, you know, if it was just you and I, we, we would have been back. doing a U-turn and mm -hmm. saying, no, there's no way we're going to attempt this. Mm -hmm. But with the support of the whole team and the confidence was, send it. Yeah, but we learned something. <laughs> we learn something every time we come yeah, out with you guys. Exactly. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Keep moving. Turn little driver. Keep moving. Sorry, Gabby. Oh, 
Oh yeah. This is Mile High Campground. We're actually in a Cherokee Indian Reservation um, here in North Carolina. And we are at 5,400 feet. It's a little slice of heaven. And it's reasonably cheap. And they had hot showers and everybody needed a shower after what three days we've been away from home now. So my thoughts on the first leg of the Trans-American Trail, it's a about what I was expecting, to be honest. A mix of dirt and some technical stuff, a mix of pavement and small towns. I mean, there is sadly no one dirt road that connects uh, east coast to west coast across the U.S. And, and so it's a puzzle piece, a, a, um, a smattering of different parts of the country put together in a, in a cross the continental U.S. trail that is just beautiful and you're really getting a good example of kind of what the U.S. has to offer from the, the technical off-road stuff to the small little rural map dots that are often overlooked or flown over. Um, and you're stopping through these and, and checking them out and supporting local businesses and you're, you're seeing old country farmer dude cutting his grass and he looks at you going down the road like, whoa, that's cool. And, and then you're dive bombing through mountain trails and stuff, trying to figure out where you're going and splashing through creeks. And I'm looking forward to what all this has to offer as we keep moving across the country. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that personal journey, to that physical journey, and the truck's gonna change, the crew's gonna change and grow and come closer together. And it's just gonna be a, a beautiful, life-changing life memory that I'm gonna have and be able to tell people about. And it's like, yeah, I drove across country on back roads the whole way. Like, that's awesome. So I'm stoked about that. Today, I know what to expect. I don't know where we're gonna camp. I mean, the worst, the hardest thing we've had to do is find camp. Like, that's how hard our lives are. Outside of uh, Northwest Georgia, I have no idea what to expect from the Trans-American Trail in Southern Tennessee, Mississippi, or even Arkansas if we get that far. I have so, no idea. I would say Trans-America Trail is Definitely worth giving a shot. Doing seven day stints over the course of a couple of years is definitely a great way to go about it. Uh, I'm happy that that's what we're doing. Take it on your own pace and uh, don't get too caught up in uh, covering miles. Enjoy some of the scenery. Day three, had a late morning, it's 11 o'clock. We're just getting on the road now, leaving camp. Uh, we camped on top of a really epic mountain up here um, at about 5,400 feet. Ready to cover some more ground and see what this trail has to offer. We'll see what happens and uh, take it as it comes. Yeah, Tim for Ben. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. The afternoon one kind of sucked with all that pavement and then turns. I mean, it's 40 miles of twists and turns on four wheels is not exactly the most fun. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I know the Trans America Trail was largely cut out on bikes, um, so that's probably why there's a good amount of pavement involved, but. I feel like once you get past the pavement, you get on this gravel, it's not bad. It was designed for dual sport and bikes. Um, and some of those roads would just be insane on a bike, insanely fun. But uh, I think we're gonna be on gravel for quite a ways here, uh, better part of this afternoon. Uh, those are welcome words for my ears, man. I keep on punching on this time.
Until my work is through Like a traveling man will do Driving in general has always been something since, heck, before I had a driver's license. It was something I would do to get out, to, to clear my head, to think, to talk through things, to get angry, to pray, to cry, to, to do all of those things. It was my own kind of safe space that I could do in my car. And it was something that, that really resonated with me. And then you combine it with beautiful mountainside, with good people and good times and technical terrain and the fall leaves right now. It's like the symphony. You know what at a symphony when, when they start to warm up and stuff and they're all kind of uh, hitting different notes at different times and, and then they all come together in this one crescendoing note. Um, that's what these trips do for me is it's you, you've got the countryside, you've got the mountains, you've got the technical aspects, you've got this truck that you've spent a lot of time and effort and thought in laying out how you want and you're out here using it. You're doing what you want with it and it's just oh, it just scratches that itch in a, in a way that uh, I've never felt anywhere else. Um, it really hits home and and then you work with cool people like this and you bring in the creative love that I have for photography and, and videography and design. And um, it's just like that crescendoing, that, that building and it just comes together on these trips. And when you get to sit back and, and you release one of your videos and you get to see it all come together and, and it's hopefully as good if not better than what you had in your mind, it's a good feeling. It's a real good feeling. And you get to hear the guests talking about how much fun they had and how they enjoyed watching you work behind the scenes. And it, it just, it, it's a real heart filling event for me personally as a creative and as a MSO guide. I just, I love every bit of it. So. This is delightful. We're headed up to Telco, kind of on the back side of it, doing dirt roads all the way up, man. It's beautiful. We've been climbing for a couple miles now. It's awesome up here. Oh, it's good. This is this has kind of been just, just fun back road cruising, some dirt roads and some gravel. Uh, fall colors are out here and, and, and banging and just awesome. Um, weather feels great. It's, it's a good time, man. It's a good time. I, uh, I have an addiction. Yeah? Pickles. The pickle? I love pickles. It's a pickle addiction? It's a pickle addiction. Pickle addiction. <laughs> put, just put the pickle in your mouth. Very Gabby seductive. likes pickles too. Very seductively. <laughs> you got my oh, finger wow. a little bit. It's a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a dog with us now. This is Blue. He doesn't like the camera right in his face, but he's okay standing here for us. So we won't torture the poor pup, but I will pet you and say hi. Yes. Yes. So this is my favorite trail so far. Uh, we started on this probably 45 minutes to an hour ago. Um, started out as some really smooth gravel like rally stage type roads through over a mountain it was like a mountain road um and we like had all these switchbacks went across the mountain and up and over it and now we're coming down into this valley and it's sort of the road surface has devolved into more of a path in the middle of the forest and you feel very remote here uh, we're probably still an hour or two from the um, Tennessee border, but um, I'm thinking we might cross the Tennessee border on this trail, uh, which would be really cool to not do that on pavement. Um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, we film a segment on this in season two. We interviewed Jamie in front of it. Is that what you guys were just talking about? If you watch season two, you know. Oh, well, I failed to do so. The transport dead bodies and um, WD-40, they put WD-40 around the bodies and then they send them through all the way to uh, California. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's impressive. That's very uh, efficient. Yeah, some of them are not all the way dead, though. We are 
on the opposite side of the road from a creek right now that's just like this perfect white noise. And um, we've got a really large camp. I knew uh, we wanted to disperse camp and I knew where there were some options because we've camped here before. <laughs> oh, I went with my drink. I run out of ammo! <laughs> <laughs> we bought these just for that. Oh wow. <laughs> this is the greatest thing. I was I've like, is there a drone coming? Oh my god, is there a drone? Uh, oh, man. But no, that was great. Uh just kind of goes to show how much fun we like to have here. Um they'd obviously planned on that for a while. They've been talking D batteries, and I thought they had something else in mind with D batteries because these two get a little weird together. Um <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're we're um, on a forest road, there's a creek, we got a big site, uh, we lucked out big time, tons of space, we all snore, so now we can sleep good. <laughs> That's gotta be picking, me, I'm just picking up my nerf bullets. <laughs> Today was a really good solid mix of terrain, and we did a lot, a lot of gravel, a lot of rough roads. I mean, like some straight up like rally roads. Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I think the team really enjoyed, you know, the diversity of the terrain that we were on. So. Yeah, we camped here five years ago when we were filming uh, The Road to Nowhere. There's, there's a dart. Yeah, you can get that. You know, and we're doing seven days and we're gonna cover some serious ground. I don't know how far we're gonna make it. We had a slow morning because everybody wanted to take a little bit of a break, but I'm always just like push, push, push. So I need some balance too. Um, and we got a little bit of that tomorrow, but I'm gonna push everybody to get up early so we can cover some more ground tomorrow and move on into I believe uh, northern Georgia, southern Tennessee. I'm looking forward to the cultural experience of being in Mississippi or parts of southern T Tennessee that I've never been in. I mean, we don't know what the terrain's gonna be, but we're gonna experience something there, that's for sure. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hello, Governor. How are you? Hello, Governor. How are you? Him feeding me pickles. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the pickles were fun. The, the pickle times were good. The forest roads were not fun to me. The forest roads were my favorite time. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a point where I stayed behind to um, relieve myself. <laughs> so and, she said. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Please said. specify <laughs> how you were relieving yourself. I was pissing. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, <laughs> With him? Everyone else went ahead and I, I had a good opportunity to uh, right enjoy the forest roads for everything they were worth. The key is to accelerate through the turn. Yeah. Oh no, I did. Yeah. Brake first, accelerate afterwards. Huh? Oh no, you don't brake. You just drop <laughs> you just drop a gear and then you let it slow itself down and then as you come around the turn you just accelerate right through it. And you Not go right where the turn is. Huh? I'll see you in the turn. Okay, a little something a little more interesting, Angela. That was interesting <laughs> as hell. <laughs> like, what? what? That was so interesting. Angela? Well, as you know, ever since I gave up my drug addiction and got out of prison, <laughs> I started getting into this whole overlanding thing. And it really, really helped me cope my 35 years with, with a lot of the issues that I had in my life. <laughs> You know, I honestly <laughs> believe him, kind of. He's so serious. Like, there's, like, I don't know. Mr. Wilson. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. You know, Tim, <laughs> you really have to look at some of the other things in life. Just because you're running 37s doesn't mean you're going to be able oh, to do everything. Ooh, shots fired. Oh. Shots fired. <laughs> That's why you get 40s. <laughs> Up in this area, I've done a lot of exploring and checking out and stuff. Um, but we're going into uncharted territory where I don't know anything about it, and that, that's exciting. And not knowing what's around the next corner and, and what's coming up, that's that'll be good. So it'll be fun. You know, I was expecting us to kind of be lazy this morning because we needed it. You know, we were tired. Um, I wasn't expecting to hit a gate first thing this morning. Um, but you know, I mean, that's just kind of what you do as part of the adventure. Everything beyond Teleco Plains is completely new to me. I guess I'm expecting long, straight gravel roads as we proceed to go as far as we can until one day we hit the Ozarks and then move beyond that. Of course, Oklahoma and Kansas and everything in between is probably going to be straight and long and gravel too, but 
Um, this is a big adventure. Seven of us. Seven of us around the fire. Six trucks. Keep it small. <laughs> build, build a connection with the people that you're around and make an adventure. That's what I'm expecting tomorrow. You know, we've had some great campsites. I love the first campsite we camped at. Mile High Campground was awesome. The view was amazing. Uh, this campsite's great. I'm so happy that, uh, you know, the state of Georgia Correctional Department uh, was lenient on us and allowed us to stay here. Um, <laughs> We give, you know, that wasn't a prison guard. It was a game guard. We're camping in a prison right now. Oh, <laughs> oh, you better not, you motherfucker. I see you. I see you. I see you. Damn it. I Alright, we are out of camp. It was a nice camp here um, outside of Teleco Plains. And it's kind of unfortunate that you gotta pick up so much trash behind people. I mean it's not that big of a deal to pack up your cans, to pack up your food, to pack up your cigarette butts. So we spent some time picking things up and kind of resorting out the fire pit and don't throw steel cans and aluminum cans in the fire. They do not burn. I mean, we're driving down the road right now and there's like people like pick it up. Day four on the Transamerica Trail. We're uh, getting going here, cruising along. We camped along this straight gravel road that we came to. Uh, there were like campsites on either side of the road uh, all the way down. Now we're getting on the road again. Looking forward to seeing what uh, today brings. It's about 10.45 in the morning. We're cruising along and uh, Jason called on the radio. He was driving behind Walter and said, you know, Walter, your, your passenger tire is looking pretty low within not even a minute. Uh, it was just a pancake. So you got something choked in the front? Yeah. Well, so the, they're, both, they're both front tires that need to be choked because I'm left enough to both of them are. Huh? They both are. Okay. And the back left tire. Alright, on the back tire. You see the hole? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Your spare is the same size, right? Um uh, yeah. So instead of actually putting a spare on, I think they're gonna actually try to plug it. Um, which is okay if we got some time to do that for sure. But yeah, you got to slow things down. Don't get too quick. Take your time. Make sure you got the tires choked up. Everything appears safe now. Um, I haven't heard from Gabby and John, so we should probably call them on the radio. Let, let them know what's going on. Here, man. Here. Here. Well, we found it. Double plug in there. Get the needle ones? Yeah. For the two bucks. Wow. Well, 
feeling Walter put a couple of motors on the side. <laughs> no. <laughs> I certainly have. The thing about a plug is it's going to get us to the service station. Correct. That's about it. Put some more air in the tire? Yeah. Use some uh, pressure. Like your entrance to the WWF like uh, stage. Ultimate <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> we tried plugging it and it wasn't holding the air. It was still bubbling through. So we're uh, taking a little detour here and we're gonna go into Teleco Plains and find a service station that can patch the tire for Walter so that he has five good tires just in case another flat happens. Doesn't seem like it's gonna put us too far out of the way and we'll uh, make our lunch and kinda fill up on gas and whatnot while we're there. We'll get a little mini break and uh, we'll be on our way. One of the things that really weighs heavily on me is not slowing the group down. I know Jason doesn't really, he, he says get the shot, but I like to keep everybody moving. And so you got one chance to get it and you've got to have your gear set. You've got to get your lighting right. You've got to know your stuff and be able to, as they're rolling through to, to bang away and get what you need, whether it's video or photo or the drone and uh, being set up. And as you're rolling through, you're trying to pull out these good shots here and there and, and, and figure out what the light's doing and, and frame up the shot beautifully so it tells the story appropriately and as you're rolling through these backwoods at 35 40 miles an hour sometimes and you're you're like is this a good corner is that a good straight shot or, or is this view going to open up in two miles down the road should i wait for that and and, and just being able to pick out and, and ultimately decide in the moment what the best shot is going to be to tell the story to to keep people interested and in, in, in interacting with the with the video is is a challenge that i really enjoy um, and on top of that you're managing 
microphones and memory cards and lenses and, and you gotta do I want to use the zoom lens for this or the wide angle it's there's a lot going on and you're just as you're driving back roads and twisty turny roads it's it's fun it's a challenge and it's, it's something that really engages that creative thought process a lot that I enjoy and uh, it's something that I really look forward to every time I come on these trips so it's a good time but well, we've had a pretty adventurous day it is Wednesday and I'm confidently I can confidently say that well here we go on gravel again that we've been on gravel and dirt and some really rough um, roads some creek crossings on uh, I think that's Cooker Creek Road um, but you know it, it's been it's been easily an 85% dirt day which is which has been pretty exciting and this canopy that we're in right now is very dark and very dense and very cool and the road surface is something I haven't been on yet. So I'm gonna get back to driving. I think we're gonna be right near the Georgia border tonight, somewhere around Lake Kokoe, camp there, finish out Georgia tomorrow, and then make our way for hopefully the eastern side of Mississippi, all the way across Tennessee um, for Friday. So I don't know, we'll see where we end up and we'll check in with you later. on the road here and we're trying to push on through and cover some miles uh, we've had a couple of good creek crossings on this um, one I would even call you know a small river um, and we're just kind of cruising these gravel roads through this forest and it's um, we've been really lucky we've had pretty amazing weather this whole time it's uh, 72 degrees and sunny today and uh, I can't complain about that I'm very happy it's a lot warmer here than uh, than it is back home in New England. We're either in Georgia or Tennessee right now, I can't tell dipped into Georgia and got back into things and we may have crossed the border back into Tennessee at this point but um, we're looking for a place to camp that's our current conundrum Just searching for a place to sleep tonight Georgia. We're near like uh, Cisco, Georgia. Getting back out on the trail today. Yeah, we camped in the Cahutta. It's gonna be a freaking scorcher, dude. Pretty nice little spot. Woke up to a generator this morning and rifle shots. It's the first uh, week of rifle season here in Georgia, I believe. Tons of gravel roads and tons of turns and all the gates are open it seems like it's really important when you are in these trips um, that you're always keeping an eye on the person behind you um, that helps control the pace of the group if somebody behind me is slower than me I need to slow down so that I can see them because I'm responsible for them if they miss a turn it takes some time to get the team connected and I, and I think we're there and the sad part about it is you know, it's Thursday and we've only got one more day of travel after this, so um, let's make the most of it.
It that just landed in my truck. Oh, okay. he's on my sweatshirt over there. I don't think he's my friend. You don't think he's your friend? Nope. Oh, there he goes. He's he's going. So what's today been like for you? Lots of Chinese music. Uh, well, I explained to the GoPro the Chinese music, and then I did a sing along. Uh, well, an interpretive dance of sorts. I uh, I installed this Android stereo in my dash before this trip, so it came loaded with this music that um, I've never heard before and I, it started playing one day when I turned on the car and um, it's Chinese. Yeah, so that's my jam. Today's been good. It's been a lot of driving on tarmac. We got uh, off the asphalt and onto some gravel here and we decided to stop for lunch. Um, Gabby got McDonald's and I ate a ham and cheese that I put hot sauce on. Uh, I'm sleeping well. I have this awesome tent that I picked up and uh, that makes me super happy, the Alu Cab. Very comfortable, very quick to set up so I don't have to set up a ground tent anymore, which I fought it tooth and nail. I was, I did, I was you know, trying not to get a roof tent for a long time and I finally sucked it up and did it and uh, I'll never look back. If you could change one thing about this trip, what would it be? My underwear. <laughs> Is it that Please bad? Change your underwear. <laughs> Is it that bad? <laughs> You're not sure with him. <laughs> Other than that, I, nothing. I mean, it's, it's all good. What do you feel about the? What do you feel like the group size has been like? Perfect. Once you start getting into eight, nine, ten trucks, it becomes a, a real challenge of trying to keep the group together, or people wanting to go in different directions, having different feeding cycles. What's Gabby's feeding cycle like? Non-stop, constant. <laughs> <laughs> more carbs, more sugar, more crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Ah, so good. Where are we at, McDonald's? Yeah, I decided I wanted a burger. So we stopped in Chadsworth. Chadsworth? Chadsworth, yeah. Chadsworth, yeah. They swung to the liquor store and I swung to McDonald's because I already have liquor because I'm a man and I prepare like that so I bring liquor but I don't bring anything else I'm fed I need a nap but we've got a, a couple more hours of what is it gravel pavement today's been a lot of driving this whole trip has been a lot of driving I'm gonna get out of this truck and not get into it for another few weeks but it's been fun so you got a couple of boys of your own, right? I do. I have yeah. two sons, 28 and 22. Mm -hmm. And um, how do they relate to the boys that you've been traveling with here? Oh, well, you know, uh, I think Ben and Gabby and uh, our buddy over here, <laughs> they're all the same age. They're all listening to the same music, same language. And uh, Walter and I feel like a fish out of water or parents on the trip. <laughs> we were, I think, the oldest ones here. Yeah, yeah I'll talk to my mom. Oh, good Aww. for you. Yeah. Uh, checking in with moms. How's she doing? She's doing well. She's just, uh, busy right now. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, dust. That's it. Look at the back of the Jeep. That's all you gotta say. It's only the dust. That's it. Everything else is awesome. Great people. Great conversations. Lots of dust. 
it doesn't matter what kind of vehicle you have, just get out there and try it. But make sure you're with somebody else. You never want to go alone. You never know what, what might happen. Be prepared, be smart, have fun. So far we've only had one campsite that was like mediocre. Um, and that was just because the neighbors had a generator. If you have a generator and there's people around, don't use it. <laughs> that's my that's my PSA for the day. Yeah, I'm glad you know I'm glad that we're able to camp in this location. It's really really nice and very uh, out of the way, and there aren't any people around, so that's really nice. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where we end up tomorrow night for the final night. You will see a bear. Do it. Interesting evening here in Georgia. Had the game warden stop by and uh, visit with us for like an hour. It was pretty awesome. I mean, um, supporting tourism and travel in you know their region of Georgia here, and you know, I mean, that's hospitality right there. starting our morning on gravel and it was a nice campground we called it early yesterday we were a little bit tired we ended the day at like 3 45 ish i don't know what the rest of the day is going to hold probably some pavement definitely some pavement i think our forest gravel road opportunities are coming to an end here very quickly he said i feel no pain then it's my life. Won't you smile with me? Smile with me. talk to Ben? I did talk to Ben. So Ben had a medical issue going on starting last night. He didn't think much about it. And then he woke up in the middle of the night and it got worse. So he packed up and started going to Chattanooga. Now I talked to him. He's good. He's at the um, urgent care right now and uh, he's getting it checked out. So he's going to call us after he's done let us know if he's okay. So. Lost one member of the team. And, one down. Uh, one down, and I think Angela and Walter are getting ready to head out today as well. So it's going to be me, Jason, and Rob and the rest John. of the trip. And John. Yeah. So. He's like, ah! Oh, bye. He said left it, left it. Well, nobody wants to hang out with us anymore. <laughs> ben had a medical emergency. I've talked to you about that already. Walter and Angela just left. And Rob wants to head back to Boston too. I mean, um, I don't know if these people are scared to get further away from home or what the problem is, but I mean, we've got the rest of the day to drive before this thing's freaking over. So who else, who else left? Uh, Gabby and John and I, and we're gonna go. We're just gonna keep moving. We're just gonna keep moving. Where do you wanna go? What you wanna do? I don't know, just go fast. Let's just go have fun. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go have fun. Yeah. I'm kinda wondering if we shouldn't inflate too. No.
Let's just go yeah. have fun. Yeah. No, I never aired down once. It got me a little scary in that turn when we... Yeah, it was not. Yeah. yeah, man, that was weird. I think that was oil. It wasn't air pressure, but... Let's go do it, and then when you guys want to stop for lunch, we'll stop for lunch and see how far we get. So I actually had my dog Blue with me on the trip this time, and he's a little 35 pound ball of energy for the most part. Um, he's my camping buddy, my hiking buddy. I, I call him lovingly my loyal turd. You wanna see Blue real quick? You wanna get Blue? Yeah. Come here, Blue. He's a seven year old uh, Blue Healer Australian Shepherd mix. He, he doesn't like being picked up or being on camera, so I don't know what he's doing right now. He might look real scared. <laughs> but he's a good boy. All right, we're on iPhone video. Where are we at? Oh man. Swanee? Yeah. Swanee, Tennessee. Uh, about to get some lunch at a place called Blue Chair Cafe and Tavern. It looks like a good local spot. I'm gonna check it out. Never been here. Don't know what's going on, but it's kind of drizzling. See if we can sit outside, bring blue out here. Be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I uh, <laughs> overloaded <laughs> all the carbs. I got fried chicken, white meat, mashed potatoes with gravy, creamed corn, and macaroni and cheese. And that, yes. So it's like a Rice Krispie Treat, but on steroids. So it's got Rice Krispie Treat, um, Chex Mix, Hershey's, marshmallows, and I'm gonna eat all of it. And I'm gonna have no regrets. It's taste tested. It so passed. A s'more, basically, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yummy? <laughs> Fantastic. We knew we could expect to be spending a lot of time on pavement maybe unmarked roads, which is on where, where we're on right now. And it's really tempting to uh, just slab it on a highway and skip these sections that kind of go up and down. But, you know, we talked about it at lunch and the guy said, we got all the time in the world to do the Trans-American Trail. And we want to make sure we do all of it. I, I think we got maybe another 50 miles um to maybe some of our camp options for tonight we're down to three trucks three people on the final day of hammer down trans america trail with mountain state overland <laughs> Laredo, uh, Laredo, 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 probably. Uh, Laredo, Tennessee. We've just been 
oh man, twisting and turning our ways around. Um, a whole mess of back roads, country, farmland, beautiful farmland, rolling hills, pastures, lots of corn, lots of cotton. Um, it's it's not dirt road, but it's beautiful road. It's it's a nice day. I mean, it's kind of wet, but the, the fall colors really pop out right now. Um, some some water crossings and stuff. It's been a good day. It's been fun. A little different from what we've been doing uh, the rest of the trip, but it's been a nice change of pace and been putting down some miles today. We had over 300 miles today compared to under 100 someday. So here is our final camp, um, Sycamore Campground and Taco Shack. And we are going to go up to the Taco Shack right now and see what it's like. But I mean, it's it was a little weird driving in, but this place is set up for like straight up partying, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, it looks well, it looks like you could have a party or two here. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on right there, but I think that's the kayak rental. Yeah. I don't know what the so is the river looks super stellar. I think we're going to totally be getting in that tomorrow morning or tonight, one or the other. So this is the Taco Shack, and Gabby just played. What? <laughs> oh yeah! Now this is a pretty cool spot. It's the Taco Shack here in yeah. and around Iron City, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool spot they have some live music here not tonight but um we're camped here so we figured we'd just come and try some of the food too okay we are on 40 east we're on our way back from the first leg of many to come for the trans-american trail we're heading for Asheville vehicle outfitters tonight and we're heading back home so it's been a fun adventure and we'll see you soon well, the trip is not over yet. What you're hearing right now is somebody blowing out a rooftop tent. I think they sold a Jeep today, but we are at Asheville Vehicle Outfitters. Were you expecting this guy to be here? Dude, too? You see this? <laughs> what? Oh, the heater. Man's got a, got a full blown heater with an exhaust. Love that. I'm, like, I'm like in awe of this now. Yeah, I haven't seen this. Oh, yeah, I'm turning your propane off. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, just a simple three gallon per minute short flow pump. So this is just a garden hose to, so you can fill up or what? No, this is the for the output. So I had an RV like shower head, yeah. but they're plastic. And if you bust it somewhere, you're kind of screwed. So I converted it to a garden hose with an aluminum shower head. And uh -huh. if you break it, you go to Lowe's anywhere basically in the country. Uh -huh. And it's long enough I can wash my bike off. Uh -huh. But yeah, just simple. And then the switch is just on demand. Uh -huh. It's quiet there too. But super, super simple. And how many gallons are oh, 13. Oh, man. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? The lucky charm. What, 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 hey, Eric, Eric, what's going on in here? <laughs> what are you lucky charms with White Claw? <laughs> <laughs> the Trans-American Trail, like, gives you the opportunity to go out and, you know, breach your comfort zone. It's going to take time and it's not something that we have the time to be able to do. I mean, I don't have the time to do it. That's why we have seven days to do it. <laughs> and we're going to have seven days to do it next year. And we're going to have seven days to do it the following year. And by the time I'm done with this, my son's going to be going with me. I mean, it's <laughs> going to be like an epic adventure and we're going to grow old and we're going to have gray hair and we're just going to have the time of our lives. I don't know what I would say, man. What would you say? I would say, look, be good or be good at it. There's been a lot of memorable experiences. I mean, lots of the roads in Tennessee, lots of the gravel roads in Tennessee were some of the funnest roads I've ever driven. I even stopped and told the GoPro that when I was driving along. I actually did a little segment where I was like, these are some of the funnest roads I've ever driven. I love zebra cakes. They make me so happy. If you're starting in Virginia, I would prepare yourself mentally for lots of tarmac. 
you will get gravel roads. They will exist. There will be some trails. A lot of people say that it's all road driving, blah, blah, blah. It's not. Prepare for a lot of road driving in between gravel sections. Um, the gravel sections will be good. Your small amount of technical driving will be fun, but it's not gonna destroy your truck. Honestly, I, I've really, really enjoyed the majority of the trails we've hit, um, from gravel roads to even pavement. Some, some of the views I've gotten some, from some of the paved roads, Blue Ridge Parkway is amazing. Um, so it's been really, really nice. Yeah, we finished up the, uh, the 2020 run on the Transamerica Trail. Um, looking forward to next year, looking forward to get going again. It was, it was, it's been a good little teaser for what we got coming ahead of us. Looking forward to it. You kind of have like a rude awakening of what it could possibly be. Anyone can do it. You just gotta be in the mindset to do so. And like I said before, you have to be with somebody else. Just because if anything ever happens, you're by yourself and you're of luck. Uh, it took us about six and a half days, seven days to get out there, and then it took us about seven hours to come back. So that should tell you kind of the terrain that you know we we traversed on the on this trip, and it was it was just epic. I mean, and I think I think it's just going to get better as we go further. So I think next year we're going to start from where we stopped on this trip and then keep going, um, and I think that's going to that's going to present a lot of opportunities for us to kind of see the rest of the country and what you know we've missed. I mean, we've done a lot of stuff on the East Coast, but you know, now we're kind of traversing a little west. So, I think I think that's going to be it's going to be an awesome series that we're going to put together. Just try it. Don't do it alone. Try it with a group. Um, it's great. It's camping on steroids. I would say, and uh, if you're with great people, it's a ton of fun, and just go for it. Get out of your damn comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Get out of the front of the yeah. TV and march yourself down the stairs and out the door and do something different. You know, <laughs> uh, there's so much out there in the world to see, you know, whether it's 10 miles away from your home base or 100 miles away from your home base. There's a ton of stuff to do. Just you need to kick yourself in the and do it. Just do it. Yep. Just live it. Yeah. Live it, live it, live it. <laughs> Yay. All right, good job. Yay. Can we go back to drinking now? Yes, please. <laughs>